А, сейчас. Это, это подвал, где мы жили 10 дней и думали, что это очень безопасно. И оказалось, что это самое страшное место. Кошмар, гляньте. Ой-ой-ой, смотри. А, взорвался снаряд у нас, просто разорвался во дворе. И осколок прилетел мне в нос, переносицу. Осколок стекла или осколок, осколок снаряда? снаряда. Да, у меня есть снимки, прям видно, какой огромный кусок металла в носу. Я думала, что это мои последние секунды жизни. Крови я залила весь дом, у меня ребенок подо мной, я ползала на полу и держала под собой ребенка. Тоже залитый был весь кровью. Шаха нет, как, как у нас дома воняло кровью. Ну, это тебе кажется, что так одеялом пахло? Нет, это пахнет добычным запахом. Ну, ты ведь ничего, все Но. хорошо. Ты уже в безопасности? Anna Savitova and her son fled their home in Mykolaiv, Ukraine, just days after the Russian invasion. They ended up in Moldova. They're among the more than 100,000 Ukrainians who've sought safety here since the war began. Moldova is one of the smallest and poorest countries in Europe, but it's received the highest number of Ukrainian refugees per capita. It's racing to house and provide for people who are deeply traumatized. And unlike other countries accepting refugees, Moldova is neither a member of NATO or the European Union. They've largely been left to fend for themselves. We hoped there would be no war. We did not think there would be a large-scale war close to our borders. But nonetheless, we have been preparing for this. And our internal assessment was saying that we have capacity to accommodate between 10 and 15,000. But the reality is that as of today, we have 107,000 refugees in Moldova. It's already bad now, but within days, it can get significantly worse. The majority of people are taken to Chisinau, Moldova's capital, where government-run facilities are already close to capacity. An expo center, used until recently as a COVID hospital, has been transformed into temporary shelter for families. An Olympic training stadium is being used to house up to 850 Roma Ukrainians. And at the border, the government has set up a small tent camp. The Kuchmenko family also escaped from Mykolaiv in southern Ukraine, where some of the earliest attacks by Russian forces took place. A staggering 360,000 people have crossed the border into Moldova to escape violence in Ukraine so far. More than two-thirds of them have moved on to the European Union. But the people who stay in Moldova are often the most vulnerable. They're the ones without connections or cars. They're also in need of help. And where the government has been stretched to its limits, Moldovan citizens have stepped in. 90% of refugees are so far accommodated in private accommodation, in flats, in houses, with families, with friends. So in this sense, for now, society is showing a great degree of empathy. This resort turned refugee shelter outside Chisinau is a prime example. Usually our complex hosts 12,000 tourists annually. Uh, people used to spend their time with family here, spend their weekends. Hotel manager Veronica Bivol says she's taken in a total of about 2,500 refugees since the war began. Ukrainians defend not only their country, they defend for whole Europe. And we Moldovans, I think, like a small country, what we can do is to help. The entire operation here is run on private donations, and it's mostly been home for women and children. 
like this young mother who escaped the war in Ukraine with a newborn and a five-year-old. Приготовит, челотонит, сорвал его в лист. Ну, это не укладывается в голове. Просто сидишь и чего-то ждешь, и не понимаешь, чего. Ну, естественно, ждешь мысленно только мира в Украине и возвращения к родным. Мне вот психологи со мной уже здесь работали и спрашивают, ты, вы спокойны? Я говорю, что, наверное, нет. Я не осознаю этого спокойствия, потому что вся моя душа, вся там, я очень сильно переживаю. И непонятно, что нас ждет дальше, когда я встречусь с мужем. Ну, очень тяжело. Но восстановление будет еще очень долгое. Both Anna and Veronica continue to wait in Moldova while their husbands are still in Ukraine. And there are tens of thousands of others like them. But officials are warning that without more help from the international community, Moldova's capacity to care for people is not infinite. We thought it will last for three or four days, but as we all see, it's endless. We had resources for one week or two weeks, but now we feel that um, uh, we need some um, help, yes, help. <laughs>